what is going on in those last few weeks of pregnancy before your baby is born? Because a lot of doctors, they say, oh, well, you're 37 weeks, you can start trying to induce. Here is why you do not want to force your baby out, even if you've passed 40 weeks before they are ready, unless there is a true legitimate medical concern. Not that you're past your due date, not that you have a suspected big baby, not even that you have a suspected small baby. And if you just happen to have a chronic condition, but there are no actual complications, you don't even have to induce then. In fact, Jenny had high blood pressure. She had gestational diabetes. She was group B strep and she'd had a previous C-section and she still said no to induction. She knew that in her backup plan, the only thing that she was gonna agree to was if her baby was absolutely not doing well and had to come out now, then she was gonna just go for her planned gentle emergency C-section. That was her plan. In those last few weeks of pregnancy, your baby is still storing up fat that's going to help them stay warm on the outside. This may vary from baby to baby, depending on what they need. Depending on your own genetic makeup, you could grow a perfectly big, healthy baby and still be able to birth that baby easily. There are some moms who are tiny, like me, who have given birth to 10 pound babies with no problems. So before you start freaking about a big baby, I'm just gonna let you know with physiological birth, a big baby is not a problem. It is when you introduce intervention in birth that suddenly the big baby is the complication because care providers tend to think, oh, well, I mean, big baby, we're gonna have to do all the things to avoid shoulder dystocia and they end up causing it. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. This is the same thing if you are inducing for a small baby that you are still growing and your baby just might need more time. Your baby is not going to follow every single other baby on the planet. You have your own unique genetic makeup and when they say percentiles, it just means that they're measuring all of the other babies. They're saying out of all of these babies, this is you're on the low end or you're on the high end of this scale. It's a growth curve. It doesn't mean anything. Is As long as your baby is still growing, it's okay. I wish that somebody had told me that when they said that my son was in the second percentile. Instead, I worried and thought that he was too small. And because I'm a small person, I also thought that maybe it was because I was malnourished in some way because of the way that people said, well, you're tiny, so you can't give birth to a big baby, but you can't have a small baby because your baby's either malnourished or too big. Like that was basically what I would have got. It was either gonna be big baby or small baby. This is how it works. Ultrasounds are not effective, but your baby is putting on ounces at the end of pregnancy. They're putting on fat to keep them insulated. They're also building up their nervous system, which is gonna allow them to have the reflexes that they need. They have certain reflexes. Newborns have the reflex of the step reflex and the rooting reflex are the two big ones. Both of these help with breastfeeding. The next thing, of course, is that their gut health is going to be extremely important. If they do not have their digestive system fully developed yet, then they're not going to be able to breastfeed effectively. They're going to have a lot of tummy problems. This is where colic comes in. This is where they end up having a lot of gas if they've been pushed out too early. Now, I'm not saying that this is a guarantee because some babies, they come on their own and they're just gassy. Mine were. Maybe it was genetic or maybe not. But the fact is, is that if your baby has a lot of tummy issues and they were induced or they had you had a C-section, then that could be part of it. This also leads to another one where they say that if you have a C-section, your baby's going to have trouble breathing. A lot of people are like, well, I had an induced labor and my baby had trouble breathing after birth. Guess what? In those last few weeks of pregnancy, the very, very last step is that your baby's lungs start to get ready to breathe oxygen on the outside. And a protein is produced called surfactant. This coats the lungs and gets them ready so that they can breathe in air and open up and inflate. Now, until that surfactant is produced, it does not matter how much evening primrose oil tablets you take. It does not matter how many membrane sweeps you do. 
It does not matter how much red raspberry leaf tea you drink. It doesn't matter how much sex you have. It doesn't matter if you do acupuncture, acupressure. It doesn't matter. You're tiring yourself out at the end of your pregnancy and baby is just not ready. This does not mean that your body is broken and defective and that you're never going to go into labor. It just means your baby has not produced that surfactant yet. So if you want to know more, all you have to do is follow me on all of my social media channels, like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And make sure you're also getting onto my e-newsletter that I send out every single week that will help you in having a natural birth, as natural as possible. Not the one that leads you into falling into what I call the natural birth traps. If you go to my website, empoweringmomsbirth.com, and scroll down, you'll find that you have an option to put in your name and email to sign up for this newsletter. You're also going to get some free gifts from me, and they are going to help you to avoid the natural birth traps that are so prevalent in maternity care that you don't see coming, avoid the bait and switch, and avoid getting tricked out of having your beautiful natural birth so you're not robbed of your birth experience. You're also going to be able to know the exact steps that you need to take to get your birth plans back on track and to make sure that you actually have this beautiful transformative birth that you deserve. Because the truth is, is that birth is a physiological process. It is not a medical one. All right. So again, empoweringmomsbirth.com. And I will see you next week. Bye.